Modern American libertarianism has evolved for many years. Many libertarian thinkers were oddly also sympathetic or even involved with fascism. It's also odd how libertarians helped Trump get elected or voted for him given all the signs that he likes authoritarianism and dictators. Fred Koch, father of Charles Koch, one of the famed Koch brothers, was one of the founding members of the John Birch Society, which is a group that is anti-communist, paleoconservative, libertarian, and also more quietly the political wing of the KKK and anti-unions, and he worked for Nazis during the war and was sympathetic to them. This is a repeated pattern among right libertarians of having either Klan or fascist sympathies. But how? Shouldn't fascism and libertarianism be complete antithesis of each other? One's about government control and the other's about absolute freedom. Well that's one of the things about fascism is they always have to use coded language to get their messages out. Fascism has to normalize certain ideas before they can begin to introduce their actual ideas. First things first, libertarianism is actually a leftist term out of the anarchist and socialist movements. Most nations that tried communism utilize authoritarian communism. This was because of two things. One, the culture came directly out of a monarchy of colonialism, and they were not used to freedoms of speech and democracy, and didn't miss it with the new regime. And two, 99% of people were subsistence farmers trying to do organized jobs they had no training or education higher than perhaps a fourth grade level if they were lucky. Not to mention the complete lack of modern infrastructure we take for granted, all mostly built by government funding in the US. African nations that adopted capitalism had the exact same problems with brutal dictatorships and death, but the Soviets at least went to space and made scientific advancements with a surprisingly lower death count per capita, while the capitalists just ended up with the starvation, genocides, and famine parts of moving an uneducated ruled over society into a self-rule, but with way more extreme wealth inequality. Libertarian communism, socialism, or anarchism requires a reasonably educated population to have the freedoms of the Bill of Rights and direct democracy on policies, and that never saw the light of day beyond parts of Spain until the authoritarian and libertarian left started fighting against each other, and Franco was able to crush them and implement fascism. Fascism by definition is anti-communist, anti-liberal, and anti-conservative, or established powers, with a belief in a mythic, oversimplified past of greatness. Right libertarianism is anti-communist, small l liberal, and anti-conservative or establishment power with a belief in a mythic oversimplified past of greatness. Once one is convinced of this, libertarians just have to be made angry or afraid enough about the other three and make them bend or complacent on the small l liberalism, making them perfect partners and sympathizers to fascism. Fascism always relies on a mythic past of greatness that never was, and a group of people who stabbed them in the back to blame for it and scapegoat. This is how every fascist nation rose to power. It's done by taking a long view of history and cherry picking all the epic parts out, even if those people would have nothing to do with you or your group, but claiming them as your own. For Hitler was the Prussian military powerhouse, the monarchy of the Kaiser, and even the power and fury of the Vikings, completely shredding any nuance of ethical problems and where they deviated from each other, and they would hate fascism, such as how now deposed and exiled Kaiser Wilhelm hated Hitler, not because he was a fascist, but because he was so common with so much power. The villain, of course, the Jews, both capitalists and communists, the Republicans who deposed the Kaiser, and Erzberger, a political leader who was forced to surrender in World War I because Germany was tapped of munitions and it was only a matter of time before they were invaded, but was vilified because a myth arose that they still could have won, he just wanted to get rid of the Kaiser. Oh, and also sexual deviants, the racially inferior, the useless mouths or people who were physically unable to contribute with work but still had to eat. Libertarians, on the other hand, use the same broad history idealizing America from the founding of the Civil War with talk of Jeffersonian freedom and liberty, ignorant that corporations as we know them were completely illegal, and the ones that existed were heavily regulated to prevent government corruption. Jefferson also only believed that their current system at the time would only work as an agrarian society, and once we moved out of agrarianism, don't even bother thinking about what Jefferson would know, he literally said that he didn't know and ignoring slavery and Manifest Destiny, where the government stole from natives and handed out land to white people, also known as welfare. They propagated the belief that the Civil War was not about slavery, and should have probably not happened because Lincoln said to preserve the Union, he would not have freed one slave. 
often ignorant that slavery was actually the reason the South cited as the reasons for secession, were responsible for bleeding Kansas and Nebraska and even tried to invade and take over New Mexico and Arizona. The glories of the Industrial Revolution and the robber barons and the gold standard and the wealthy takeover of the Republican Party ending it as a party of civil rights, ignoring how un-American corporations were, which created a massive power imbalance between laborers and employers, explosion in government corruption, labor abuses, pollution, and worker massacres that all of the technology for manufacturing was created by making any company with a government contract make all their patents open source, that the gold standard allow rich people to crash the market every 20 years and buy up and conglomerate bankrupt small and mid-sized businesses at a steal, that silver was so common that using that would have caused constant inflation, that using either made them too expensive to be used for the industrial purposes. Who are the villains? Hoover for doing too much. If he had done nothing, they believe the market would have fixed itself even though all evidence shows it was that he did too little too late, as there was a glut of supply, not enough demand because wages had stagnated since World War I. Then they had a trade war with no demand and full inventories, so there was no need to hire as many people, causing a downward spiral. Of course, the Jekyll Island meeting, which created the evil Federal Reserve trying to fix the very flawed problems of the gold and silver standard. And they claim it was the fiat currency that caused the depression, even though there's no evidence of that. Of course, if you go deeper into libertarian groups, the Rothschilds messing with Europe and America are evil villains, which Hitler also used as evidence of Jewish evilness and desire to rule the world. They viewed the 40s to the 90s as a great time in spite of evil socialist FDR, when America was actually great, never mind that union membership was at an all-time high, as were taxing the rich and the government, spending on infrastructure and education. They view all of our wars as influenced by the all-powerful Council on Foreign Relations, and if you go even deeper, the Bilderberg Group. They have a cherry-picked, though complex but non-nuanced version of history, making them feel smart but still highly ignorant of actual history. They hate leftist anything, just like fascists, with no understanding of what Marx and leftists actually believed, and that their premise was based on the fact that automation kept destroying jobs and organizations to get good wages for those jobs, so there should be things like social safety net, or a new system where the people own the means of production, either where unions had the say in the business and HR, or all-out ownership of automation by the workers, or the government. All the left is the same from Democrats all the way to Communists, even though there is a ton of variety and nuance, from Libertarian leftists to Communists to all-out Anarchs and Mutualists. Of course, extreme Libertarians have their own right-leaning version of Anarchism, which is Anarcho-Capitalism, which is a joke on its face, because literally the only reason why corporations exist is because there is a government backstopping them in bankruptcy, so creditors can't go after the wealth of investors if the company goes under. Without this protection, corporations cannot and will not ever exist, and growth in small and mid-sized businesses would be sluggish, as taking on debt could mean homelessness on the street if they take any risks, though they are banking on being able to go farm, of which only 2% of the population now does because of industrialism, so even if you work as a poor person, you can barely eat. They're also completely ignorant that the power to make laws about bankruptcy is exactly where in the Constitution, where Congress gets its power to regulate corporations, like it did for the first 100 years of the nation, while they refer to government regulation as unconstitutional. This is an example of how they believe that they understand the Constitution because they read it once and have a pocket copy of the Constitution, ignorant that our judicial system was and still is based on English common law, and nothing in the Constitution is clear-cut in black and white, and even one line from the Constitution is like opening up a whole extra tab, or 20, on how it actually gets implemented in the real world. Jefferson often complained how Americans believed if they read the Constitution and Blackstone's Book of Law, a Cliff's Notes of English Common Law, it made them constitutional experts. Modern libertarians have mostly only read the Constitution. They believe that corporate tech and industry has made America what it is, and without government taxes, we'd be on Mars right now, even though that while engineering is very well suited to the private sector and capitalism, pure science is so expensive with payoff that shows up only after 50 years later, and only if everyone can have equal access to it, nothing we have would exist now without massive government spending into science research. The entire movement of standardized replaceable parts we take for granted by the government during and after the Civil War, and the laser and the transistor and the satellites were all things we now have that made Silicon Valley and this video even possible, all fully funded by government cash. Their constant villain and reason for anything in the government 
being bad is too much government regulation and intervention. Ignorant that government regulation and intervention has to happen when corporations exist as we have them now and didn't for the first 100 years. It's because of this that two groups that would seem like mortal enemies end up being great bedfellows. Very rich anti-unionists created, crafted, and helped perpetuate and fund libertarian ideology and libertarian think tanks. Charles Koch helped fund libertarian ideals taught in economics classes in college that helped create the recession as a scheme to not have to pay the government for taxes on his father's inheritance. Fascists can hide out in the Libertarian Party, pushing all of their ideas verbatim while pretending to totally care about liberalism, freedom, and democracy, and totally not racist. They can also use Libertarian groups as recruiting grounds for new fascists, especially ones sold on all the other parts of Libertarianism, but show signs of being less rock-solid and easily swayed from the small-l liberalism especially if they can begin to equate that with leftism and communism. The Klan can do the same thing with their ideas on states' rights if someone shows signs of slight racism and openness to another alternative version of history, as the John Birch Society and the Klan had many of the same members. To a libertarian, that sounds like lies on top of lies and conspiracy theories, but the historical evidence is all there. American libertarianism is a manufactured political position created by some of the very worst people relying on some very good people's greatest ideals of freedom, peace, and democracy, while allowing fascists and Klansmen cover and places to recruit people. Lucky for me, when I got taken in by that, the freedom and democracy was what I cared about most, and as I learned more and more about history and government and behavioral science and economics beyond what Ron Paul told me, the entire ideology collapsed. There is a real reason why right libertarianism is fringe in the U.S., even though Charles Koch made it slowly take over the Republican Party, because it's not a real political philosophy and only exists to help the rich, and a great place to breed fascists.